meeting here in October this year and Paris County Council suddenly realised that they owned the site. They knew they owned the site but they'd forgotten how, you know, that it was important and they, they, um, they came here and realised that there were health and safety issues and so once they realised there were health and safety issues they suddenly went to it and they've done all this work that you can see which we're very pleased about and is that the first step on the run. The next step is that, as you saw in the, in the, um, in the prints, I passed round a, 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 a consultation. Uh, that's the word for it these days. I don't like it. It sounds too formal. Um, they passed round some ideas on the back of an envelope, uh, which I showed you in the, in the prints. And um, um, uh, the upshot of that is that they've got a, a planning consultant who was the, one of the people who designed the Battle of Bosworth site in Leicestershire and also the, designed the interpretive centre at the Battle of Culloden in Scotland, believe it or not. And um, she's working on this project. She did some work on Abbey Come Here, which we're very pleased about. It's very good. Um, so that's a step forward, but they're going to come here and they're thinking about, in the short term, putting some sort of interpretation round here. The next longer term is to actually build a more permanent interpretive site here and then in the future, and this is where we come to the nitty gritty, uh, I'm sorry I'm going on so long, but I, I, I'm, I, it's important for me personally as well. Um, the, the next step is that we are talking about the possibility of building a proper interpretive centre to tell people the story of the end of the of the Welsh Princess Llewellyn and that. Now that is going to involve serious work, and um, I'm at the moment um, the one who sort of has written to all the assembly members. Kirsty had a very nice letter from me, uh, and all the other assembly members had a very nice letter from me, inviting them to come today. And fair play, Kirsty has. So I'm so pleased that we. So that's good. But there's a lot of paperwork and organisation behind this. And at the moment, I'm the, since 1969, I've been the one daft enough to to take it on and do it. I can't do it any longer. I'm going to retire as of now. As, well, not as of now, but as of the end of this weekend. So what I want to do is I want people who think that they can do something to get this show on the grass and the ground, to keep it going and to develop it, I want you to contact me before the end of the day and let's swap names and addresses and I want you to get together the other big thing is that as a result of the, the little, little boy from North East Wales who wrote the letter to Harwin Jones, the, the, um, the um, uh, Prime Minister, the First Minister in the Assembly, um, uh, as a result of that, his school in Flincher have raised an amount of money to start off a fund to develop uh, the interpretation of this site. Now that means one thing only, that we have to set up a proper management committee, we have to have a constitution, we have to have a treasurer, we have to have the usual officers, because nobody will speak, other, uh, nobody will con have anything to do with us unless we do. So I'm begging everybody here, please, all the patriots that are, that are here, I'm sure that you would be willing to join in and form of a committee of about about half a dozen people who will take this thing forward for the future. 
and let me like retire a bit. Like I like coming, Avan. I like coming and doing this, but but it's a lot of strain. I'm not going to tell you about the dream I had the other night. Um, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, you know what they say at the party conferences. Put your hands in your pocket. I don't want you to do that. I want you to. I want you to commit yourselves to forming a management group who will take this project forward. And let's do it today before the day's out. Strike while the arms stop. What they. What the uh, salesman says: never let the uh, never let the uh, sun set on a deal. So I want you to decide now, today, and I want you to take this slot forward. Some of us are getting old, older, uh, and um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, part, partly to keep warm, but partly to show your in, your understanding of what John has done over the many years of getting this together. I think he deserves a round of applause at the very least. to welcome our first speaker. When Richard Livesey, who was here for many, many years, handed on the baton to Roger Williams, the MP, unfortunately he cannot be here today through personal reasons, but I'd like to introduce the Assembly Member for Brecon and Radnor and the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrat Party, Kirsty Williams. But it's only about cow, cow mouth standards. So after about more than die, I didn't get lost. But I just wanted to come here to uh, pay tribute to the people like John and David who have worked so hard for many years to make this day happen, the weekend happen, and for me to pay my respects to those that have gone before. Uh, and in their sacrifice and their campaign for the good of our country. Now, I appreciate that there are people here who have different views to me, and there are people here who have different ways of achieving their goals. But what I think 
can unite us all is an appreciation of our history and an appreciation of our nation and our belief in wanting our nation to have a bright future. Uh, Now, John has spoken very um, passionately about the need to do more here in Kilmary, to do more up at the Abbey, and to do more at the other historic sites that we have in the county, such as Bringlass, uh, further up in, in Radnorshire. I suspect that if we were in Scotland, the government there would have spent a great deal more time, resource, uh, thinking about how we can do that. Uh, and I hope that those of you will not pass the buck onto people like John, but all of us here can play our part in making sure in for future generations, should they come to Kilmary, they will be able to gain a greater understanding of why this is such an important part of our history, what went on here, and why we are all still fighting the battles that we are, that we are fighting. I know that everybody is, is very busy. Uh, I know that all of you have got lives to, to go back to, but we just can't pass the buck onto a handful of people who have got us to this stage and just say that that's you know, turning up once a year is as much as we need to do. We all need to be able to work together uh, to make this project happen and to make this type of project happen the length and breadth of Wales so that all our historic sites are looked after and are preserved and are interpreted in a much better way than we have than we have here. In the piece of paper it says I'm here to do a patriotic uh, address. I think that's kind of bigging me up a bit too much really. But I did want to be here to carry on the tradition of my colleague Richard Livesey yeah. who was a steadfast supporter of this uh, event and my colleague uh, Roger Williams. Um, I dare say, if there is a mole for Martin Shipton, I'll read about this in the Western Mail next week. Uh, uh, hey. But that's all right. I've already had to uh, run the gauntlet of explaining uh, some of my votes in the Assembly about why I want to spend lots and lots of money on ensuring the record of our own Parliament is actually available in both languages. about my vote on that occasion. Uh, most of the time, of course, he just ignores me. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you very much indeed for the invitation. Uh, it's a privilege to come, to come here uh, to pay my respects, uh, to, to remember and to use this as an inspiration for my work. And I'm sure it's an inspiration for all of you in how you view how we can take Wales forward in whichever way you think
earlier this year and I'm really sorry that Jill's not here. Um, Jill John, my bright I can read it in my gala have you. Do you ready? Have no here do a nod. Hun never or white eye dross at Lenadoy. Bell I lord or Gokyan Kamreed, Kam sorry, for Gokyan Kadid. A dyma cyfle cyntaf i mi gael siarad yn gyhoeddus. Hoffan, diolch, di John, a mae waith a dyfal bachod. Mewn trefnir a clysur, pwysig hwn megis coffai, clywelin a'n tiw ola. Thank you, John, for all your hard work. I bumped into John over the summer at our local farm shop in West Wales having a picnic and poring over ordnance survey maps with a colleague. When I asked what they were doing, John explained that they were researching the, the natural local stone in the area and studying the buildings, at least I think I've got that right, John, to see where the stone came from and relating it to, to, the, to the buildings and their history. And I thought, how fantastic that this kind of research is quietly going on and what a contribution people like John make to our understanding of our history. I wasn't born in Wales, been Dodo Van Kynion and right, y'all. As a child, I spent many happy holidays with grandparents and other family members in Ronald in North Wales. I can clearly remember the first time as a young child I went to the village church there. I was amazed how loudly and enthusiastically everybody sang in this tiny little church, in complete contrast to the very large, quiet chapel I was used to at home. And I thought this was wonderful. Bendigedi, I remember feeling this really is a different place, a different country, Wales. The ward I represent in Cardiff is a very multicultural one. The local schools boast over 100 languages are spoken. There are many asylum seekers. Pe people find Wales a welcoming country where in the main everyone lives side by side in harmony. And this, I believe, is the challenge for us in Wales. How do we value, protect and support our culture and language, while at the same time offering a welcome to the stranger and maintaining a multicultural ethos? It's important that our annual commemor commemoration of the death of Llewellyn in 1282 and the massacre of his army has broad cross-party support. Wales has a radical tradition, a campaigning tradition. Since 1999, we have our Welsh Government and last year we gained further lawmaking powers. But still, our everyday lives are profoundly affected by Westminster Government. Tony Blair, Tony Blair took us into a war that the majority of us did not support. And now we have a right-wing government in Westminster which is ruthlessly pursuing its austerity agenda as though there were no alternative. But we know there is an alternative, a socialist alternative, but they are intent on carrying out attacks on those people who are already the poorest in society. As a local councillor, I'm worried about the effects of so-called welfare reform on the most vulnerable in my ward. Our, com our council budgets have been severely cut and we face dreadful choices. Disability benefits and working tax credits will be cut and our pensions are under attack. Council tax benefit will be scratched and replaced by a new council tax reduction <coughs> scheme from next April. All claimants will pay at least 10%, even if they currently pay nothing. And I know that in Cardiff alone, 27 households fall into this category. So comrades, we need to organise. We, we must fight these vicious cuts and we must support our local communities in whatever way we can. Thank you for listening. Diop, come round here. New movement, civil rights movement. Well, I'm here to tell you that the movement is now being formed, it's grown, and it's recruiting. I'm now going to call Jim Dunkley to give you more details about what it's going to do. It seems um, a bit strange coming here um, to talk about rights, really, to people like us who understand what our rights are, perhaps better than many people who live and are born and bred in this country. And because we understand those rights and what they are, we can see more readily perhaps that they are regularly trampled on. 
by certain sections of the establishment. Sometimes aided and abetted by the Cardiff Bay consensus as well. And these are the things that the Welsh National Rights Movement is here to highlight. I can give numerous examples. Why, for example, is our Welsh Assembly Government proposing to build 400,000 new homes in a country when we can barely house our own people, when our own people can barely afford to buy a house in their communities? We have a right, basic right, to live in our communities in this climate, not just to elect and pay tax to people who are able to claim expenses for these things, and that would include Labour Party people, I should add. We have a right to speak our own language in our communities. We have a right to our land. We have a right to, to oppose the militarisation of our education system and the militarisation of our land in this day and age. All of these are rights that we as a movement would fight and highlight. We also have a right to ensure that our country is not turned into an energy colony and that our country and our land is not plastered with wind turbines to export electricity to England, even though we, we will pay the bills. We will pay the bills. To me and to many of us, that is unjust. And we as a movement want to highlight it and do what other parties won't do and reach parts that other parties will not reach. And I, that's the message that I've come to bring today. I've kept it short, kept it succinct. Thank you for your time. Yeah, hey. I'd like to ask Adam Jim. Not so short and sweet. Right, it's good to see that the spirit of revolution is still here and alive with us today. Despite the public attack by our national newspaper and politicians and the political parties, it's great to see the White Eagle, the symbol of resistance against the state here today, and in great numbers. <laughs> 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 it's good to see that you said, don't tell us what we can do, don't tell us what we can't do, we will decide how passionate we want to be. Okay, we don't need the Western Mail to tell us how to do our affairs. Right, I'd like to thank everyone for their efforts, it's been a busy year with a lot going on, especially the Can Boys, Pauline Russell, of course, Phil and Anita, the rest of the Back to Cover crew. I know everyone here from the different groups, I know everyone's been busy, and I wish you luck in the year ahead, because it will be a busy year, it will be a hard year. <coughs> there will be a new royal for a start. The Empire PR machine will be in full flow. We won't be able to stop that. The windmill problem will continue and carry on. Well done to Shannon Gethin and all those who imposed the wind, windmill mass throw up on our mountains. Finn's energy minister recently said that they want no more across the border because they don't really work. Yet our politicians want to throw up more and more. So, like Jim said, we are the power pack of Britain. We will not be used as a resource for our neighbours. For the Welsh Government Ministers here, always remember why we're here today. This is for our Prince. Our Prince died here with his tilly and 4,000 soldiers died in Bilth Wells, unarmed. They died in the name of the monarchy that he swore allegiance to. So remember them when you do your royal shindigs. Remember them when you get sucked into celebrating the next royal wedding, the next birth, the next jubilee, the next investiture. Remember, Llewellyn's head was paraded jubilantly through the streets of London and then put on a pike outside Tower Gates for all to see. So, I say that to our Assembly Ministers, sorry, our Government Ministers. Remember them, not the Windsors. Come and Come and read! Let's call up uh, Dennis Morris wants to talk about uh, a petition he's got. Dennis? Can I Adam, can I follow on, Britain? Yeah, you can. I was the person in Brett's Mail, not Balter. So I will remind people that Balter are not the only people. Okay? There are blacks and there are whites. 
Did you read what was in the Western Mail? Boys, Heather! Boys. And this has nothing to do with Llewellyn. Uh, we just formed a, a minor political party called Plague uh, Lynn's Road. Just as importantly, uh, yesterday we put online a petition. We're asking the Assembly <coughs> Government to uh, prohibit them from flying any British Union flags outside Welsh Government buildings. So if you can go online and sign the petition and ban the British Union flag from flying outside Welsh Government buildings. Jochavau. Thank you.